All right, now we're going to graph this thing. So we're going to graph the equation y equals f of x. Well, that's three different things depending on what the x's are. So for x less than 0, I'm going to be graphing y equals negative x minus 3. And that's a line. So all I need is two points, connect the dots, and I'm done. So I'll pick one value less than 0, uh, say negative 2. The opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So there it is. Now even though I'm not technically allowed to plug 0 into this formula, as we talked about in class, doing so will let us know where these y values are headed. So it's, it's a calculus-y kind of concept. But for us, if I plug 0 into this formula, it'll tell me where the hole in the graph is. So I plug 0 into that, I get negative 3, and so temporarily we're going to have a hole in the graph at 0, negative 3. So I connect these dots together in a straight line, oops, and there it goes. Now the next part of the journey, x is between 0 and 3 including 0, excluding 3, and on this part it's 3x minus 3. Once again, it's a line. I can actually plug 0 into this guy, and sure enough I get negative 3 out, which means the hole in the graph I used to have at 0, negative 3 is now plugged in. It's filled in. It's not as good as point on the graph, 0, negative 3. And as before, I can find the location of the hole in the graph coming from here, if I plug 3 into this formula, and by doing that I'm going to get 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 is 6. So I connect these two together. It's a reasonably straight line. There it is. And for the last leg of the journey, the function is x plus 3 which means I'm graphing the line y equals x plus 3. I can actually plug 3 into this guy and get out 6. So once again, the hole that we had has been filled in. And I can plug in another point, say 5. Uh, it's going to give me 8. And then I'm going to connect that up, and that goes off that way forevermore. So this is the graph. Um, now we're asked to find the zeros of f, the x and y intercepts of the graph, determine the domain and range of the graph, the intervals on which it's increasing, decreasing, constant, relative and absolute extrema if they exist. Okay, so we'll go through and answer each of those from, this, uh, from the function and its graph. All right, uh, the zeros of f. Those are the values of x which make f of x equal to zero. They correspond to the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts. So looking at this graph, we're going to have a zero from uh, over here on this part, which corresponds to x less than zero, so over here. So if I solve this equal to zero, I'm going to get x equals negative 3. That means that we have an x-intercept, negative 3, 0. Looks like we also get an x-intercept on this part of the function, which corresponds to this guy. So 3x minus 3 is 0, gives us that x equals 1, which means my graph is a little bit off. That should actually be crossing there right at 1, 0. So those are the, the zeros are negative 3 and 1, which gives us the x-intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. For the y-intercept, uh, we that was one of the points we originally plotted. We plug in x equals 0. We plug in x equals 0. To this formula, then, we get negative 3. 
All right, so those are the zeros and the intercepts. Now let's talk about domain. The domain, uh, we have a graph for every single x value. If I look at the formula, there's no denominators or even radicals I need to worry about. The domain is all real numbers. What about the range? Well, the range is something we usually get from the graph. If I imagine taking this graph and pushing it to the y-axis, I would get the entire y-axis covered down to and including negative 3. Or in other words, I get every y-value from negative 3 on up. Where is f increasing, decreasing, constant? Well, if I imagine walking on this graph from left to right, I'm heading downhill until x equals 0. Then I start heading uphill, and I'm continuing to head uphill. So I'm increasing from x equals 0 off to infinity. Where am I decreasing? Well, from negative infinity up to x equals 0. Remember, when we look for intervals of increase and decrease, we're looking for x values only. Relative and absolute extrema, if they exist. Okay, so relative or local absolute extrema. Down here at 0, negative 3, we have a local minimum. So local minimum is a point zero negative three, and that's where the function has its absolute minimum. The absolute minimum value, in other words, the smallest value the function will ever give you, is the y value negative three. So the, the local or relative minimum is a point, and the absolute minimum is the function value itself. So that'll do it for number one.